Wayne called me at uh, approximately one or something like that, and we went down Thursday afternoon. I met Tracy down there, and uh, we assessed the situation. It was broke all the way through, and uh, we got together. We got a game plan. We worked nonstop till we got it done. We cut it out, and uh, it's a multi-talented group. I mean, there's nothing that any of them can't do. And they all done a, a fabulous job. I mean, there was welding involved, there was carpentry involved, there was concrete involved, there was cribbing work to be done. And under the bridge, we had a truck we had to go under. We had to figure out a way how to get the plywood up to hold. We had to wire it in. And we saw cut it and took a ram hoe and Brian, he done a fabulous job breaking it out without disturbing anything. Had to go back in and put shims in, and they done that throughout the night Thursday. You know, of course, you don't want anything like this to happen at all. I mean, it, it's a, it's stressful for us. It's stressful for the public. It disrupts everybody. And uh, but you've got to look for silver linings when you have something hard in life. And 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 one silver lining I see uh, coming out of this is is. Our crews, our bridge crews, they do work like this every day, and I'm very proud of them. And, and it does give an opportunity to, to show the public what these guys do, because normally it's all behind the scenes, and I, th I think they, they deserve credit and accolades. I'm, I'm very proud of these guys. Uh, when the DOH pours concrete for a road surface, there's, ex there's extreme testing that takes place. In other words, if the concrete mix isn't right, we'll refuse it. And how we determine that is an on-the-spot test. Each time you see asphalt being delivered, or concrete in this case, there's someone there from our uh, materials division that will test that product. And how they do that on the concrete, they had tubes, or if you will, little colanders, that they poured samples in, and between each sample, I noticed one of our workers, no gloves, he had to wash the cylinders. What's he do? He sticks it in the bucket. <laughs> I, I picked up on that because I'm thinking, here I am shivering, and here he is dipping his hands in ice cold water in temperatures in the 20s. Those boys work from 7 o'clock to 7 o'clock. They was here at 7 o'clock Thursday morning, and they left here at 7 o'clock Friday morning. Josh and I came in at 5 o'clock Friday morning and was on the bridge. And then when they got there, we got our I had sent three guys to get the equipment, the materials we needed, and we took six by sixes and went underneath it and cribbed it and timbered it in order for it to hold. And once we got that done throughout the day, and it was cold, you know, I would do a bay, Chuck Young would do a bay, I'd do a bay, and Chuck Young would do a bay. But the crib work, that was, that was the most vital part. I mean, if you didn't have that right and the uh, amount of weight and the way it would had to had to apply the concrete that had to be done right if if it failed there we was really in trouble you know we have iron workers we have carpenters we have crane operators we have certified welders uh, you know steel fabricators uh, they're very skillful and they they've had my respect all along but like I say we have a multi-talented group of people you couldn't beat them I mean, they go from, from the bottom to the top. There's nothing any of them can't do.